okay but wait like <laughs> can we just get into this cat scrub shirt for a minute like <laughs> meow welcome back to vet man with ray you are clearly here because either you want to work with animals you love animals and yeah those are i think the only reasons that i could think of that you're why you're here <laughs> so thank you for tuning into this channel make sure you like this video if you actually like this video comment on this video and subscribe and share to anybody that likes animals and if you know you love animals then you need to be subscribed because why would you not be subscribed <laughs> one second the dogs are barking explaining to you um basically my way of procedure of getting a job with animals specifically in a clinic this could be either va or vt so to begin there are two routes that i'm going to take you guys through actually so like i said we're going to have a fact for every video okay so i have my little notebook here Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's gonna be fact or fake. French Bulldogs and Bulldogs are a part of the 10 most popular brachycephalic breeds. You can either put fact or fake in the comments and at the end of the video, we're gonna review the answers and we're also gonna go over these, the, the top 10 most popular dogs. So like I said, there are two routes that I'm gonna take you guys through. People who have just always been surrounded by animals, who always want to work with animals, that's what they want to do, that's their, that's their whole life goal. And also people who just enjoy being around animals and they like animals, but they've never really been immersed in the atmosphere. So to begin, you have your people that either want to go pre-vet, they want to be a vet tech, they want to be a vet assistant, they want to be a veterinarian. So of course, in order to get in order to get to those levels, you have to have shadowing experience or intern experience or anything like that. So those type of people have already been exposed to animal clinics, shadowing opportunities, shelter projects, anything like that. Which means they look better on paper, right? So those people, it kind of makes it easier for them to get that job. They already have the experience. Um, they are, already have been documenting everything and one thing to mention, you always document anything you've ever done while working in a clinic, whether it was in a clinic, in a little harm, a little farm hospital, whether it was training with something for a day, like anything that was animal related, you document it, you document it, you document it. If you can't document it, write it down, text it to someone, something. Do not leave it unnoted, okay? Do not leave it unnoted, I promise. So, um, yes, they've either been, their family is in it, or they're super surrounded by it, so they already have that in their background. Now, clinics, at least from my experience, clinics are a lot more open to letting those type of people work with them or shadow them because they're pre-vet. You know, they either want to be a vet tech or they want to be, want to work with the zoo animals, they want to work with aquatic animals, with exotic animals, they want to be a doctor, a veterinary medicine. So the clinics are a lot more lenient and they're a lot more open to letting them work there because those people, their end goal is to be at a facility just like theirs. So that makes it easier. So for people like me who is pre-vet and I was bio in school, it kind of made it easier for me to get internships and shadowing opportunities and even jobs working with certain clinics because I've already had that background as far as school and they know that that's the track that I want to go. Now I'm not saying that you won't be able to get it, you won't be able to do it because you're not pre-med or bio or whatever. I'm just saying it kind of, there's, there's just two, two sides of the spectrum. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, you have people who just really love animals, but have never really been submerged in a clinic or at a large animal hospital or at a little old farm hospital, anything like that. So if you fall in that category, then I would say you need to get at least one or two things under your belt. Whether it could be working in a kennel, working in a shelter, whether you dog sit, and with dog sitting, like, you know, did you command train? Did you house did you house break them? Did you leash train them? Things like that. You want to have at least one or two things under your belt. So that way, whenever they look at your resume, they see, okay, you know, this person may have not gone to school for this, or they may not have done X, Y, and Z. 
but they see that you do have experience and that you're not just getting in this job just to get in this job you know if they see that you've done a little bit of work behind the scenes and now you're ready to move to the next level now another side note the resumes make sure you're always double checking your resumes and updating your resumes based on what position you're going for what type of job you're applying for because certain things that you've done certain experiences that you have they kind of tailor and fit to different things always proofread and double check like even if it's already been proofread and double checked 10 times let's say you want to use it like maybe a month later still go back and double check it still go back and read it because there might be something you need to change there might be something you want to take out something you want to add come here paula so there might be things that <laughs> paula wants to play there might be things that you can add and there might be a better way that you can say things or a better way that you can express what you've done and how you did it. So I always recommend just proofreading it and no matter how many times you've proofread it, you know, if you go a few weeks without reading it or without using it, definitely proofread it. So you heard the two routes. Those are the two routes that I think are generally the type of people who do it. You figured out which one you're in, now you have to apply. Uh, I definitely say don't put all your eggs in one basket because it happened to me and I was all sad and in my feelings and then I went on a splurge and applied to like six different places and now I have a, I'm at a stable clinic and I love the clinic. So I definitely say don't put all your eggs in one basket. So when you're applying, you know, make yourself look good. They always say you sell yourself, sell yourself and it's, it's easier said than done. I mean, I personally struggle with selling myself um, but just be like be you be authentic you know the typical things that they say which really don't even make sense but whenever you apply make sure you apply to more than one location um, make sure you look in your area so like for instance if you want to work with large animals try to give yourself a mile range or the type of animals you want to work with and see what's around your area so you can so you can say okay there are three here and two here they're all about the same distance, so I'm gonna apply to all of them. I'm gonna apply to all of them, just in case. Because you never know, like, you apply to one place and if things are looking good, but they may also have somebody else who applied just like a few days before you, things like that. So you just wanna give yourself a nice amount of options. So I definitely say apply to more than one place, especially based on the type of animals you want to work with, the type of area you're going to be in, and things like that. I would also say, you know, go to the place, check it out, scout them out the same way they scout you out because, you know, it may look good on the outside, but it might not be too pretty on the inside. So you want to make sure that you, if you're going to work there, especially if you're going to work there for a decent amount of time, that you're going to be comfortable, you're going to be happy, you're going to love what you're doing. You're going to enjoy the people you're working with. So the same way they scout you, you need to scout them. See how they interact with each other. See how they interact with the patients. See how they treat their work day. Try to get like a shadow day in or like a walkthrough day so you can figure out what position you like. So you can figure out like exactly what it's going to be like basically. Um, and then lastly, you always want to be persistent when applying. So when I applied to be a VA slash VT, um, I was in Dallas and then I went to Kansas for my internship but even while I was gone in my internship I was still talking to my PM which is our practice manager and I was still talking to our shift lead like throughout the whole time I was there so they saw that I was really interested I was really dedicated and I really wanted to be there and now I'm there so you really want to show them that you're persistent and be consistent with talking to them you know let them get to know you you get to know them so that way you know whenever you get there you know breaking the eyes is actually not that hard but it just shows them that you're a person who's ready to get your hands dirty because it's a dirty job it is a dirty dirty job so those are my my little tips on trying to um get a job at a clinic some places may want you to shadow first to see you know if it'll be a good fit for both of you and then they'll hire you on which is also fine um i personally didn't go through that step but i have heard of clinics doing that step which is you know that's fine too like if 
they probably make both of you more comfortable that way you have time to actually to learn and see what's going on instead of just, instead of it just being your first day and then you're kind of just like a fish in the water and you don't know what's going on and we don't want that we really don't want that so yes that are my those are my those are my steps those are my key tips you better take heed you better take heed okay so we have made it to the end of the video you have had about like what eight nine minutes to to fact check me and you better not have looked it up online you better not I mean how else are you gonna find it but still um drum roll please Ta -ding! that is a fact so, so let me pull up the article guys it just sat on my notebook let's wait so um first for those who don't know brachycephalic dogs um is basically basically brachycephalic airway obstructive syndrome so the brachycephalic airway obstructive syndrome is a pathological pathological condition affecting short-nosed dogs and cats which can lead to severe respiratory distress that is true french bulldogs and bulldogs are both a part of the 10 most popular brachycephalic breeds so um, from this article they have french bulldogs bulldogs boxers Kepler king charles spaniels shih tzus boston terriers mastiffs and pugs those are just the top 10 okay there are plenty more and those are just dogs so our next video we're gonna do a cat fact or fake and we're gonna see what we come up with oh I already have a fact for you guys I can't wait to use it if you need any more advice maybe I guess um, you could definitely talk to me in the comments and let me know if you have any questions and I will do my best to help so thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed this video I am out peace <laughs> oh my goodness. Bye bye.